Deep diving offers new challenges not found in shallow water diving. Being experienced and knowledgeable about how your total diving system functions and your personal limitations will make your dives more enjoyable. Training in SSI deep diving will open doors to many new sites and different activities such as wreck diving and the chance to photograph marine life only found at deeper depths. We must first define deep diving. Dives made to depths from 0 to 60 feet or 0 to 18 meters are considered shallow dives. 60 to 100 feet or 18 to 30 meters is the recommended recreational diving limit. The 100 to 130 foot or 30 to 39 meter depth limits are recommended only for trained deep divers. When deep diving, there are conditions to plan for that will make your dive more enjoyable. At deeper depths, more air is needed for normal respiration. Depth will increase your air consumption and may require the use of larger cylinders. Other factors that may affect air consumption are your physical size and level of diving experience. Larger individuals may need more air, while experienced divers may use less because they are more relaxed in the water. By being in good physical condition, eating right, and knowing your own personal limitations, deep diving will be an enjoyable adventure. Dive planning is always important, but when diving deep, it becomes even more so. All the steps you've learned in your open water course must be followed in order to make your dive a successful adventure. This begins long before you leave on your dive trip. For example, your equipment should be well maintained and adjusted properly. To ensure proper service of your equipment, your SSI dealer offers the SSI Equipment Service Program. This program was developed so you would receive consistent, high-quality service for all of the elements of your total diving system. Through the Equipment Service Program, your Air Delivery System, Information System, Buoyancy Control System, and Exposure System are all thoroughly inspected by qualified service technicians to make sure they work as well as the day you purchased them. A dive slate is helpful when deep diving. Write down important information discussed during your pre-dive plan, such as your maximum depth and bottom time, a dive profile, and contingency plan. Have a dive light handy in case of poor visibility, with a backup or secondary light as well. It is important to be aware of the amount of air available to you when making deep dives. Cylinders for scuba diving come in many sizes. The Aluminum 80 is one of the most common and would be a good choice when making a deep dive. Cylinders of 100 and 120 cubic feet are available for divers with higher air consumption. Other considerations when choosing a cylinder are how they affect your buoyancy before and after the dive. Aluminum cylinders will tend to be positively buoyant at the end of the dive, so you may want to be slightly negative at the beginning of the dive. This will assist you with a slow ascent to the surface and the ability to make your safety stop at 15 feet or 5 meters. If you know the rate at which you consume air at the surface, you can calculate how long your cylinder will last at depth. This is called your surface consumption rate or SCR. The formula for calculating your SCR is in your SSI deep diving manual and your SSI total dive log system. If you maintain a record of air consumption rates for your dives, you can measure your comfort level. As you become more comfortable, your breathing rate slows down, lowering your SCR.
Similar air consumption rates are one indication of compatible buddies. Your SSI dealer may also offer the SSI Calculate, an invaluable tool designed to assist you in calculating your SCR and planning your dives. When diving from a boat, make sure the crew is equipped to handle any given situation. The boat should have all the emergency equipment needed, such as a first aid kit, radio and oxygen kit with trained personnel. It is recommended that you and your buddy use an ascent-descent line or the anchor line when making ascents and descents. Knowing the location of the nearest medical facility also falls into the category of good planning. Preparing for any dive trip begins with training, practice, and knowing your own limitations. Don't let egos interfere with safety. Advanced training will teach you the skills to dive comfortably, but experience is gained only through diving. When planning a deep dive, you should consider how often you dive and at what depths. It is a good idea if you gradually increase your depths as you gain experience. As always, a written plan discussing objectives and reviewing hand signals is the first step before donning your equipment. The slate is very important for deep dive planning. You should write down your plan as well as a contingency plan. This way, if you decide to dive deeper, you don't have to refigure your bottom time underwater. If your original plan was to 90 feet or 27 meters, also add 100, 110, and 120 feet or 30, 33, and 36 meters to your plan. Dive table problems are solved based on computing bottom time as if a diver were at the maximum depth for the entire duration of the dive. This would mean the dive has a square profile. In reality, spending your entire dive at a specific depth is very unlikely. Most dives will be multi-level. Let's say you dive to 80 feet or 24 meters, then work your way up the reef to a small wall located at 45 feet or 14 meters. As you ascend the wall, you end up at 25 feet or 8 meters. You should then ascend to 15 feet or 5 meters for your safety stop for 3 to 5 minutes. Your profile will look like this. This is multi-level diving and computers will give you credit for ascending to shallower depths, thus increasing your bottom time. Many divers choose to use computers for this reason. Most air-integrated dive computers will calculate your air consumption rate throughout the dive and log it in the computer log. This is a very handy feature and another reason why computers are highly recommended for all deep divers. Ask your SSI dealer for more information on computer diving. On your way to the dive site, review your plan with your buddy and set up your total diving system. Make sure you're familiar with your buddy's total diving system so you can assist in the event of an emergency. The environmental conditions also must be taken into consideration. These conditions may require changing the depth, bottom time, or even aborting the dive. When you have completed your final buddy check and are ready to enter, do so together following the proper entry procedures for the location. When descending, face your buddy and stay together. A descent-ascent line can be used to help control your rate of descent and to give you a reference point. A slow controlled descent rate of 75 feet or 22 meters per minute or less is much safer 
and will make it easier for you to equalize your ears. Keep a close eye on your instruments as well as your buddy. Take your time and relax. When you have reached your planned depth, relax and get acclimated. Remember, if at any point you or your buddy should feel uncomfortable, ascend to a shallower depth. You should not go beyond your experience or comfort level. Due to Boyle's Law, air is denser at depth, so you may notice greater breathing resistance. This is normal. Be aware and stay in control of your breathing rate. If your breathing is not under control, do not continue the dive. Rapid breathing could result in hyperventilation and stress. By taking slow, deep breaths, you will stay relaxed and have a more enjoyable dive. Due to this increased pressure, your exposure suit will compress, resulting in loss of body heat and buoyancy. A cold diver is more susceptible to stress, fatigue, and decompression sickness. Take these factors into account when choosing an exposure suit. You may want to consider using a dry suit to increase your comfort. Your SSI dealer can help you find a suit that fits your needs, as well as train you on how to use it properly. Also remember that at depth, color is lost, so bring a dive light. You will be glad you did. Corals and marine life will come to life, showing their vibrant colors. When it is time to ascend, face your buddy and begin a slow ascent to the surface. Remain in control of your buoyancy and maintain an ascent rate of no more than 30 feet or 9 meters per minute. Your ascent rate will increase as air in your buoyancy control system expands. Be ready to vent air from your BC to slow your ascent in the last 30 to 40 feet or 9 to 12 meters. If your ascent becomes out of control, you may ascend too quickly and miss your safety stop. It is recommended that you use a safety stop line or bar with an air delivery system for each diver, tied off at 15 feet. Stopping at 15 feet or 5 meters for 3 to 5 minutes will allow you to off-gas excess nitrogen you accumulated during your dive. Remember, should you need air during your safety stop, use the extra air delivery system. It is not recommended to surface without making an adequate safety stop of at least 3 to 5 minutes. Decompression sickness, or DCS, is usually caused by staying too long at depth and ascending too fast. Even performing no decompression dives within the limits of your computer or the U.S. Navy tables does not fully eliminate the risk of the bends. Physiological factors that hinder the off-gassing of nitrogen can also cause DCS. Such factors include age, obesity, use of drugs and alcohol old injuries that affect circulation, heavy work, and water temperature extremes, such as a particularly cold dive or a hot shower after a dive. The signs of the bends will most likely appear within the first hour after the dive, and usually not more than 24 hours. Nitrogen narcosis, or the rapture of the deep, is due to the increased partial pressure of nitrogen by breathing compressed air at depth. The symptoms generally will appear around 100 feet or 30 meters, but some divers will feel the effects of narcosis at depths as shallow as 60 feet or 18 meters. A diver's susceptibility may change from day to day or from dive to dive. Symptoms include dizziness, numbness of the lips, ringing in the ears, loss of motor skills, fixation on objects, and loss of judgment. Should you experience nitrogen narcosis, simply ascend to a shallower depth and the symptoms should dissipate. Carbon dioxide excess is generally caused by unintentionally hyperventilating while diving. A poorly maintained or hard breathing air delivery system could be at fault. Symptoms might appear in the form of dizziness, confusion, and an inability to think clearly. Just relax, gain control of your breathing, and take slow deep breaths. Once you gain control, perform a slow ascent to the surface. 
Since many of the diving injuries have such similar symptoms, they should all be treated as decompression illness until such a time it is determined otherwise. The injured diver will need immediate medical care. Don't ignore any possible symptoms. After performing your safety stop at 15 feet or 5 meters for 3 to 5 minutes, surface and exit according to the safest, easiest method. After the dive, gear down and relax. If you're planning to make a repetitive dive, there are a few basic rules you need to follow. Remember to pre-plan both dives before entering the water, as your surface interval will be directly related to both dives. Also, it's better to do your deepest dive first. Avoid strenuous activities between dives and drink plenty of non-alcoholic beverages. Dehydration is thought to be a major contributor to the bends. All deep dives should be planned according to the Doppler no decompression limits. The recreational diving community does not advocate the practice of decompression diving. Thus, it is considered technical diving. You can avoid exceeding the no decompression limits by planning your dive to a shallower depth, reducing your bottom time, or extending your surface interval time between dives. Should you accidentally exceed the no decompression limits, it is recommended that you follow the omitted decompression procedure listed in your deep diving book or as your computer recommends. If you are using a computer, it should be able to provide the decompression stop information needed to get to the surface. Computers also track how much nitrogen you have absorbed and off-gassed throughout the dive and your surface interval. Your SSI dealer can help you choose a computer that best suits your deep diving needs. When repetitive deep diving, be sure to allow plenty of surface time before flying or driving to high altitudes. It is recommended to wait 18 to 24 hours after your last dive before flying. See your SSI deep diving manual for suggested guidelines. Deep diving requires more intensive preparation and planning. Staying within the no decompression limits as well as your own personal limits, is very important to you and your buddy's safety. Plan safety stops into every dive and understand the effects of deep diving on your body. Remember, plan your dive and dive your plan, and you'll be headed for an exciting deep diving adventure. Mm -hmm.